Hey, Gabriel Blake. Hey, Gabriel Jose. Where are we today? I'm literally driving. I'm in Sacramento. Wow. So I'm <laughs> not in my apartment. <laughs> this, this changed everything. I'm still in my apartment, just to be completely yeah, well, fair. Yeah. Yeah you, should have, yeah, you should have stopped in Sacramento. I heard that it's like just filled with wonders. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. So uh, just as you are driving, just for just going like a bit straight to the topic of the day. Uh, so I think that this was your pick. So can you introduce the movie? Well, we were supposed to watch the Robert Altman film Shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't find it anywhere, like anywhere short of a torrent. Like mm -hmm. we would have had to buy a Blu-ray and <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. So we, I, I picked the movie called The Guest and it was on some list. Was it on Collider? I think so, that it was Collider. Yeah. And it was the a piece... Collider list of yeah. like 50 awesome movies on Netflix right now. <laughs> and to be fair, it's like half of those movies are good movies. That's true. I... Because of that, I just made an assumption they were all good movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's I, as I told you when you when you pick it, I said that like, this can be an interesting surprise or it can be a train wreck. <laughs> yep, more train wrecks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this was directed by uh, Adam Winger. I'm going to be like, just mentioning this as uh, as you don't have your uh, internet uh, access right there. Uh, Thank you. So it was released in 2015, no, 2014. Uh, I don't know why Google says that it was in 2015 in Russia, but in the civilized world where gay people would not be stoned to death, uh, it was released in 2014, directed by Adam Winker, that maybe some people could remember by the comedy masterpiece, You Are Next. That it was, it was like probably one of the most misleading trailers that I ever seen because it looks like it was going to be a horror movie, and I ended up being one of those movies that is so bad that it's enjoyable. And I, I could say that this movie is so bad. I usually say that like movies like flip over, like you know, like the quality is a circle, and it's like movies can be like really good, but if they cross a line, they start like just being bad until they actually close the loop again. And it's like, oh, it was so bad that it was good. Is that this movie actually think that it flips multiple times? And is that you don't know if it has been enjoyable or not? So thank you for expressing your blunt opinion. So you did not <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry from the perspective that we didn't know what we're going to be like finding here. I laugh a lot with this movie. Okay, so um, in my defense, I have been very busy and I just picked this movie <laughs> off a list because the description actually sounded good. They, they compared it to what, what was the movie they compared it to that we both liked? Oh, I don't remember. It was, I... it was the one where the... The thing, uh, I don't know. It's like, what's next or next level? You're, it's not your next. Uh, no. Uh, I don't remember. Let me just, I'm just checking the list again. But uh, yeah, there were a couple of references that they were okay. That they were a bit more like, this could be interesting, as we were saying. It's like, I'm not blaming it on you. It's like, I think that this was like a wild card. I'm even like yeah. still willing to watch shortcuts next week. This was a bit more like <laughs> we need to decide something. And it's like I, I don't regret it from the perspective. Is like as I mentioned a couple of times here, is that there is, I have another group of friends. I'm sorry for making this to you, Blake. Son of a bitch. And on Sundays we watch uh, bad movies. Is that just on purpose? Bad movies, but they're like supposed to be movies that they are so bad that they are enjoyable. And today, when we're watching Ben Hur from 2016, something that shouldn't exist, we actually, I mentioned, I mentioned this movie. And I said, like, this movie is something that if you watch it with friends and you are drunk, high, or you don't have any kind of faith in the human future, you know, it's like, this is a good movie. This is something that you're going to find enjoyment in. <laughs> because you are nihilistic, because whatever reasons, it's like, it can be okay, yeah. If you thought your next was a fresh, sorry, was a breath of fresh air to the horror genre, might I suggest that Phil's director-writer combos follow up. 
a twist on the action thriller genre called The Guest. One part Terminator and one part classic John Carpenter. I have no idea how this actually relates to John Carpenter. What film, exactly was the twist? The fresh twist? Because it felt like every movie I've ever seen. It felt like every movie I ever seen, but worse. Yeah, well, <laughs> I will say that like I enjoyed the setup. Like it, it had promise, um, and I enjoyed it through when he, I think right after he beats up all those football players in the bar, I okay. liked it until that point. <laughs> are, you like, going, oh. are you going to be like playing the sign sign car? Because I'm going to be ignoring the rest of the movie from this point forward. <laughs> No, not at all. The rest of the movie was such a clusterfuck. When the climax <laughs> of the film takes place in a Halloween haunted maze that for some reason is fully active, even though it's like days There's away. No they, st <laughs> they still have the fog on and the sound effects. I, I was, was so annoyed. I was like, this is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Let me, okay, let me just make like, I mean, a, a better introduction before like giving my opinion even like deeper, but the movie, the movie is about uh, a family that they lost a song in uh, probably, I don't know if they say if it's in Afghanistan or whatever, you know, like war territory and uh, a friend of his song comes to visit them, but they don't know him at all. He just shows up like one day at their place. So the guy, they don't know, the family don't, they trust that he's good and he starts like just getting along with everyone uh, flawlessly. You know, it's that they're like just best friends. There is like a scene with the father that is basically an asshole <laughs> in <the whole> movie <laughs> that he's like, we cannot trust him. And 30 seconds later, like he's trusting him like he was like just his lost song. That was so um, bizarre. What was that yeah. about? It was about bad writing. <laughs> the script is garbage. <laughs> they didn't know how to write anything. So, uh, but my favorite scene on the point of winning them over is when when he wins over the daughter, when the daughter invites him to the party, and he tr she tries to go to the restroom, and this guy, Dave, I think that is his name, Dave is on the restroom, and he comes out with a very, you know, like, low place uh, towel, and she started That's like just odd. getting, yeah. And she started like just getting thirsty. You know, she like pretty... literally like starts hyperventilating. Like, <laughs> so stupid. He's like, okay, you wanted me to respect. If this was supposed to be the smart character in this movie, you know, is that you just completely dumb her down. He says she's just the stupid at this point, like everyone else. So, I mean, I can understand the mother. And I agree with you that it's like the setup, the visa setup when the mother is like just waiting, sitting down in the chair. And you think, that, well, maybe it's going to be like a bit more of a psycho thriller, everything more nuanced, more subtlety, more like middle ground. It's like, no. It's like, as you said, when he goes to the, uh, to the bar, when he goes to the bar, there I start like just... Hope. There was such hope early on. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, no, in the first point that he just go full on violent guy, he's like, no, this is going to be completely over the top. And it's like, as you say, it's like it ends up in this climax that is like, you know from the beginning, when you see like one of the first scenes is a scarecrow with a, a pumpkin, is that like you know that it's about Halloween and that there is going to be some kind of a climax involving something Halloween related. And forgive me, I didn't grow up here. I don't know how, how schools are configured, but if you have an emergency exit or a back exit in a high school, I really hope that you don't have a mirror maze to go through. <laughs> what if there was a fire, like in this movie? <laughs> yeah, you have a mirror maze <laughs> to go through. <laughs> that, that part of that point, it was like, oh. And the thing is like, I, I checked the cast first you know, I was thinking, well, maybe the movie is going to be interesting, you know. And I saw that they have uh, Lance Reddick, uh, the black guy that does the uh, sergeant or whatever, the military disciplinary uh, lieutenant yeah, or whatever there is. I love, I, love that, I love that guy too. And I, I had a feeling that it's like usually he just remains on TV. And I thought, okay, that's pretty cool that he's actually doing like a, a movie. Maybe it's going to be like just, it's going to become more serious when he pops up on the, uh, on the screen. And he's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> when he started, like, just like, oh, yeah, I, we need to cover this. And he just shows up there and starts, like, just shooting. It's like, it's just bizarre. Everything is bizarre about this movie. 
I laugh a lot. I said totally. None of it made sense. Like when the SWAT, when the military comes to the house and basically just shoots at the house for like an hour. Yeah. Like they're supposed to be military, but they that guy had like a foot long beard. I was like, could they not get actors that looked like military? I don't. I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe he was like incognito or something. But uh, yeah, undercover. Yeah, undercover. But the thing is, he, they actually arrive there. They start shooting at the house. The woman is there. They start asking all these questions. They never identify themselves. They don't. They identify yeah, later. Right. But it's like they start like asking them, and it's like probably if I was the woman, it's like who are you? You know, with these guns in my house, I would be like probably terrified. But no, she actually right. gets terrified after they have been fighting. So they have, sorry, after they have been shooting for five minutes to the house. At that point, it's like oh, I'm going to get terrified, and the best thing to do when you are terrified is just running into the house that they are shooting at. <laughs> Oh, there's so many parts irritated the hell out of me. Yeah. And I, look, this I'm not going to say that I'm sorry for not liking this movie because it was not your pick. It's like this movie was garbage. And this movie has a 91% in Rotten Tomatoes. Are you kidding? Nope. And it has a 76 of Metacritic. That blows my mind. <laughs> You're speechless now. So the thing is, like, uh, when I was watching it and I was thinking about, like, oh, this from the same director as you are next, I was thinking that is, like, it tries to do something similar. You know, I'm going to try to be like just subverting expectations. So you are next. It was supposed to be a, a horror movie, but at the end, it turns into a massacre of the killers of the supposed killers. Is like in this one is like so you're trying to do like some kind of psycho thriller, the family they don't know if the guy is good or bad, and then you turn it into super soldier kind of thing. And that ending, those last 30 seconds of the movie, when he started like just like limping away of the high school, like dressed up as a fireman, I was like, No. No, you no. You're yeah, trying to do the Jason he, Bourne thing pissed me off. I was like, this is lazy. It's lazy. And as if the military was just going to explain this all to this girl. Well, there was this program and we did super soldiers and he killed your parents. Yeah, by the way, they killed your parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or I like also the kid. I, I also love that they're saying, that, okay, we're going to be like taking the numbers. We're going to be like giving it to his brother. The brother is going to be like doing something with his computer. He's like, no, they just look up the number on Google. Right. So right. And, and then, and then the, the daughter who she just called, like the army has the number you can call to find information about <laughs> military. And there's, there's like a command center that they're just like, oh, yeah, I'll well, get that information, ma'am, and call you back. And then they do. Of course, of course, we will give you confidential information. It's absolutely fine. I, it's something what I was thinking. So I look, I've called like many times to different call centers. It's like, I'm pretty sure that the military is not going to have, it's not going to be like doing what uh, Google may do. That is like, okay, yeah, we're going to have like support and it's going to be in India. You know, it's like, I don't think they're going to be outsourcing that. And I don't think that they're going to have hiring people that if I enlist tomorrow, it's like, yeah, I will enlist, but I want to work in a call center. Yeah. And then when she Googles that or when she looks up the name and that pop up, call. This person immediately. Um. Yeah. <laughs> God, it was, yeah, it was a train wreck. I mean, I can understand that he tries to just, as I was saying, like subverting expectations of the genre. And I think that with you are next, maybe work okay, but you cannot take that movie seriously. I think that you are next in place, it dances, you know, on the thin line between I'm being ironic and I'm just garbage with this movie, I think that it tries to do the same as I like, know I'm just stupid. It's a pity too, because I thought there were several very talented actors. Mm -hmm. um, like the mom, I thought she yeah. was such a good, that was such a good performance. And um, the girl, she should have been, who just divorced Johnny Depp? Uh, Amber Heard. That should have been Amber Heard. The, the, the daughter? 
Yeah, she should have been cast in that role. Amber Heard should have. Oh, been. gotcha, gotcha. Um, all right, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't understand how this could have any positive reviews. It's so ridiculous. There's so many plot holes. I, I mean, the second he gave the son that knife, I was like, well, I guess we know the final scene. <laughs> Everything is like so foreshadowed. You know, but it's like just getting to a point that is just ridiculous because you see a couple of times uh, flyers for the dance, for the Halloween dance. So I was expecting that's going to end up in the Halloween dance. It's, like it, it's true that it didn't end exactly at the dance. It ended where the dance was going to be like taking place. But I don't know, man. It, it was just done. There were a couple of times that I said, okay, there is a couple of scenes that I felt that they were shot okay. Yeah I, yeah, I feel like there was some cool direction. Yeah. Well, cinematography direction. I don't want to just try to just give it some kind of saving grace to the director of these shoots. Yeah. And also, was the son gay or was he not gay? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that he was gay. That I was think the that... weirdest scene. Like, they didn't address that at all. And I was like, what? Did I miss something where he, like, comes out or? Nope. Nope, he's, like, he's just lonely, you know? But the thing, and he's never attacked for being gay. Well, I mean, they call him faggot, but it's like he's not because he's doing something gay related. But right. at, that point, at that point, when the director says, like, Oh, I didn't know that he was gay, they say, Well, yeah. I don't know if it matters that he's gay or not. If someone just uses his lar and attacks someone else, that's not going to be okay. <laughs> It just felt like lazy. Yeah, yeah. It felt like you. Did you watch the Simpsons? Uh, no, not. I mean, I've seen a few episodes, but not. Like... Gotcha. So there is this concept that they introduce. You know that nowadays it's like the fashion, or you know, like the cool thing to say that uh, the Simpsons like predicted everything that is happening. So uh, there is an episode. Yeah, yeah. There is an episode that it has this concept that I love bringing up. That is the Pucci. I don't know if it was that one. Pucci? They call it Pucci. That is like when shows introduce something or movies, they introduce a character that is completely out of place, but it's super cool. Okay. And it's like for just attracting like new audience. So in the uh, in the Simpsons, they play with this cartoon, uh, Itchy and Scratch. And one yes, day they I decide, know. okay, one in one episode, they decide to add a third character that is a dog. And the dog, he's super cool. He's a, you know, like a surfer, always like a, like feeling good about everything. And kids hate it. Is that they were supposed, like all the studio heads, they were thinking that this is going to be like something that kids are going to love, are going to love. And it's like the kids actually hate it because it's completely out of place. So I feel like this character, this Dave character, is a Pucci. He's like, he's the putsy of the whole movie. He's like, he's like super cool. He's like, like just getting along with everyone. He drinks with the father and he actually serves his, uh, you know, his, uh, his sorrows. He actually bonds with the mother and he's some kind of foulet. He's super hot. So the daughter that is like just completely hormonated, I guess, is like she has something, he has some kind of eye candy and he actually bonds with the kid and protects him. So he's like, he's just so perfect, so cool, so amazing. There is a guy, look, even as a character, I cannot develop any kind of sympathy for you. And I like that actor, you know, it's like, I think that's I like Daniel that Stevens. Too. Yeah, I think Daniel Stevens is, is a decent actor. I don't know if he's good or not. I think that is decent, at least. But on this movie, it's like, you're a placeholder of an archetype more than anything else. Yeah, he, there, he had no character development, nothing. And then they gave him a really lame backstory that has been told 18 million times. Yep. Yeah. No, I mean, I thought that what they're going to be like playing with is that he actually killed him accidentally because I didn't read anything about the movie. It's like I thought that there was going to be like some kind of, okay, he's dealing. <laughs> I love also like the father. And what he says, like, what about he's dealing with that PTSD or whatever it's called? He's like, wow, this almost feels like early 90s when people didn't know what AIDS was. Right. The, the, what if he has the PTSD? Yeah, he passed it to us. <laughs> I just, I, I'm, my mind is blown. I keep going back to 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm going to spend this evening reading reviews to find out exactly what they found redeeming. Did you want me to this, check? This honestly, it felt like, um, it felt like a student film almost. 
Uh, I just feel like this was something limited by the talent of the people that they put it together. Is that these people cannot do more. Did the director write it? No, it was the same writer as you are missed. Okay. Yeah. So do you want me to check the, uh, the score for the New York Times? Please do, but there's no way in hell the New York Times reviewed this movie. Do you think? <clears throat> so there think is so. there is something called New York Times watching. Uh huh. Uh, oh crap! Now it's asking me to uh, to log in. Okay. <clears throat> so overall, I mean, I did you hear about this movie when it came out? No, definitely not. That's it. So it's basically like Ben Hur 2016. <laughs> I actually just because of how bad it was, I assumed it was a Netflix original. Did this have a theatrical release? I would say so. Yeah, I mean, I can check if they have a. Let's see, what was the budget? <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, look, budget five million, five million dollars. That's only one twentieth of the budget of uh, Ben Hur 2016. Wow. Somebody put five million dollars on the table for this. Yeah, I mean, and some people put one hundred million dollars for Ben Hur, but <laughs> and the box office was two point seven million. So it, I mean, it must have only been released in like L.A. and New York, right? Probably, yeah, pretty limited. Yeah. So uh, this uh, watching New York Times thing says, watch it. If you're looking for a lean thriller reminiscent of 80s action classics, director Adam Winker and writer Simon Barrett, the team behind the indie horror chiller You Are Next, draw on a wide variety of predecessors, many of uh, 1980s vintage for this stark action picture. But like the best films of Quentin Tarantino, it so ingeniously intermingles so many influences that it somehow becomes an original creation. Dan what Stevens, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Dan Stevens is a revelation, effortlessly pivot, pivoting from tough to sexy to menacing to compassionate. And Micah Monroe, so vulnerable and likable in the horror film It Follows, that's true that she was there, sounds similar notes, uh, sorry, sounds similar notes as the one member of the Peterson family who seems to know there is something off about this stranger in their midst. <laughs> Skip if you get annoyed by figuring out a movie's twist early on. The guest takes his time with his, ses with his set up, allowing Steven's character ample time to spin his yarns. It takes so long, in fact, that impatient viewers may very well get ahead of the movie. That's the only reason for skipping it. It's if you can figure out basic plots. Yep. Yeah, if you have watched, I, I would actually read it in a different way. If you have watched thriller movies before, you already watched this movie. But as it actually derives from so many different thrillers, it becomes its own creation. A pile uh -huh. of shit. Isn't that literally the definition of derivative? Yeah, but it's true that Quentin Tarantino drinks from a lot of things. And what he creates is new. Now, Reservoir Dogs, I don't remember watching any movie that it has like the same story as Reservoir Dogs. This one, I remember watching movies that they are like super soldiers and they're infiltrated people, you know, that they come like with good intent and they end up killing everyone. Yeah, I just, this, it's just so done, the storyline. It's just, I, it blows my mind the New York Times had <laughs> to watch this. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, there is also a, a review. Yeah, there is actually a regular review. Yeah. I'm only going to be, there's only like four paragraphs. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Let's see. He knows. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. Oh, yeah. The guest, New York Times Critics Speak. It's a New York Times Critics yeah. Speak? <laughs> yeah, it is. And oh the reviewer, God. the reviewer, do you want me to check the reviewer? Uh, yeah, is, is it Manola Dargis? No, it's Janet Katsolis. Oh, see, that's not one of their primary critics. And they <laughs> let, like, anybody write about the shitty films. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I would expect that at least the New York Times would be, like, a bit more picky about giving the tag of critics speak. So, as I understand it, like, each week, the, the New York Times critics just get to pick a movie, and it gets that, like, stamp of approval. Um, 
but I don't know who would pick this as their weekly pick. <laughs> Someone, imagine that you're like the last one to get to the uh, writer's room that day, and this is the last movie that you have to pick. <laughs> the only it's one safe. to pick from. Yeah, he said, well, I would take this one, you know, and he says that as he has like a limited release, I'm going to sound cool. I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just don't get it, but this was awful. It was awful. Well, I'm going to be giving my score, but before we go to that, he said, did you like You Are Next? To be honest, I don't remember it that well. It's the one where the thing chases you, right? No, does it follows. That's the one I'm thinking. Yep. Yeah, and that one is good. I really like that one. But uh, your nest is the one that this wealthy family, they go to a you know like house in the uh, in the forest that they own, and uh, one of the sons has a new girlfriend. You know that is the first time or the second time that is going to be like meeting everyone in the family. And once that they are all in the house, they are like uh, some people, they just arrive and they are like wearing animal masks, like pretty green animal masks, and oh, they start yeah. killing the family. Yeah. So she actually hides, and the twist is like she's a survivalist, that she was like raised for surviving anything. And she basically kills everyone, all the killers. Yes, I remember that film now. And I think that I liked it, but not a lot. Yeah, so I like it as I said because I think that it just dance pretty well between being dumb and ironic, you know, a bit more like just trying to be revisionist with the horror genre. I don't think that this can be revisionist of anything. No, I mean compared to this movie, that's a masterpiece. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but sure, yeah, it's significantly <laughs> better. <laughs> so my score, my score is a three. That was my score, too. I mean, it's just, it's less than mediocre. I would not recommend this to anyone. I will probably remember this movie a year from now because it's like every <laughs> thriller ever. Yeah, I mean, I think that I would remember as a warning, you know, like uh, her said, like my reptilian brain, it would actually just react immediately. <laughs> if I see the guest, you know, if he pops up on Netflix, like, watch it again, he's like, no, don't do it. <laughs> just protect you. <laughs> Just protect yourself. But uh, yeah, if it shows up on another list, avoid that list. Yep, exactly. That list is lying to you. So, uh, but the thing is, like, I will watch this movie again. You know, so that's the point that I was like, just hesitating about the score because I think that for my group of friends that we watch uh, terrible cinema, this is this is okay. Terrible cinema. Is they like, didn't you laugh a couple of times about like how dumb the movie was becoming? Yeah, uh, more I. Maybe not laugh, but I got more and more angry. <laughs> yeah, as I was telling uh, my friends, is like the purpose of this podcast that we record is usually at least is like just watching movies that we find interesting and potentially good. Is that this movie was a bit more of a better pick for the uh, my other group of friends, you know, for watching something that is so bad that is enjoyable. But no for kids. Yeah, and that's uh, that's that's on me. I didn't have time to research anything, so I nah. just picked something from a list, and uh, and I won't do that again. And it's one fine. Day we'll watch shortcuts, <laughs> and we'll pretend we never saw this. Man, it's absolutely fine. I'm not blaming it on you. I just think that is a it was hilarious. It's like I I would have never watched this movie if it was not because of the situation, you know, of the specific yep. circumstances that we were in. So. Thank you, you know, because I may watch it again, you know, with this group of friends, and I'm sure that we're going to be <laughs> laughing pretty hard. You're welcome for introducing you to this. Yeah. Gem. Yeah. So you are down for watching shortcuts? Yep, let's do it. Okay. All three hours of it. Yeah. All three hours involving Julia Moore Genitalia. So, to <laughs> everyone, thank you so much for listening. Okay, as Flake Cruz the Keys is lost forever, just remember to wash your hands. Bye. There you go.